you know, a lot of things sound very empowering and uh, and good in theory, but in practice aren't informed by anything but someone's desperate desire to have the world conform to their own narrative. Um, and I'm talking, of course, about the trans women have male privilege meme. Um, this video was inspired by someone, Pollyanna Rowe, who decided to comment, uh, well, more than a year since it was published, I'm glad people are still viewing my vids, uh, at, on the video to which I'm replying, Dear Mish Fest, when does this vaunted male socialization start? Um, and she did not like the idea, perhaps, that Fest for All Women should include trans women. So let's start with what she said to begin with, just because, you know, these kind of things should be up there for uh, purpose of record and so that we have some context. So, first comment, get over it, move on. These women started putting on this festival f before you were even born. Again, the obsession with the details of my birth is really unbecoming. Do you whine when your neighbors down the street throw a party and don't invite you? Well, depends on the party and depends on the circumstances. As I replied, I mean, if my neighbors were holding a block party and I lived on the block and then they didn't, they decided later on they didn't like me and so they kicked me out. But the reason they gave was because I wasn't born and raised on this block. Well, that's kind of bullshit. And they didn't have the women born women policy um, eponymously and sorry, not eponymously. Um, they didn't have the very inaccurately named women born women policy before I was born. That was invented in 1991 after the um, transphobic shunning of Nancy Burkholder. So actually transphobic isn't the word, trans misogynistic. Um, you woman hater, you. So anyway, do you whine when your neighbors down the street throw a party and don't invite you? Again, it would depend on the circumstances. My neighbors down the street are perfectly welcome to do whatever they like. Um, but if they say everybody's invited or every person on their block is invited, then yeah, the, the, the metric she makes little sense. Um, do you pick it and try to disrupt it? I, sorry, I'm confused with how my video calling you a hypocrite is an attempt to disrupt fast. Um, I mean, don't worry, you can go on having your, you know, part-time hate group on the vaunted land, which is, um, of course, bought and paid for by some rather well-to-do people, so, you know. Let's not talk about class, because class never matters, I find, um, when you're dealing with essentialist perspectives. Uh, I hope not. Same principle should apply for the festival. Once again, already said, it does on that basic level that people can freely associate. Um, but that to proclaim something as a women's event and to bar trans women is patently dishonest. Do something positive like organize a trans music festival or other event. One, I, look, I don't want to hang around with a bunch of men. Um, and, yeah, that's, Mishfest is about women. A trans-only festival would be about trans people, regardless of gender. Um, I'm sorry. <laughs> that they're two completely different things. And stop trying to wreck the one in Michigan. Oh, it's wrecked. It's completely fucking wrecked. It's one of those little relics of the second wave that now, you know, that used to be something positive and now seems to spend a lot of its time doubling as a hate group. Um, and yeah, that's the point I was making before. So yeah, I mentioned that. 
I said I was holding Fest accountable for its own bullshit rhetoric about being a fest for all women and then inventing new rules when they decide they don't like some women. And then, here we are. Their party has been going on for close to 35 years now, so there's no excuse for not knowing what their guidelines for participation are. Once again, their guidelines are fluid and designed to uh, suit the personal proclivities of Nancy, of, uh, of Lisa Vogel. Would you try to crash a meeting of all black women or all physician women if you didn't belong to those classifications? Okay, the black one makes sense. The physicians, um, it would really depend on what said physicians were talking about. If it was a DSM-5 meeting, then yes, I think there might be a protest and possibly an occupation on people who were trying to um, to quote one of uh, one of the heroes of the second wave, morally mandate me out of existence. Um, if you hold a group meeting and specify transgender women only, should transgender men feel entitled to attend or non-transgender women? No. This intersection of privilege does not work the way you think it does. Um, you, if I said it was a fest for, if I said it was a meeting for all women, and then at the door said, oh no no, <laughs> sweetie, you're not a woman unless you had to go to a doctor and say you were. That would be considered, um, what's the technical term? Right. Hypocritical bullshit. <sighs> Let's see. Um, and yeah, I don't, I don't ignore groups that double as hate groups on basis of tenure. Um, on basis to how much good they've done for society otherwise. I don't care if you're a benevolent bigot, you're still a bigot. Alright, um... And then... We had her say, it's pretty simple. If you were born female, and are female now, you are welcome there. If not, you are not welcome. Uh, this word, it does not mean what I think you think it means. Um, can I ask you, which is more important to your identity as a human being? Your brain or your left arm? Your brain or your torso? Your brain or your sacred yoni? Um, or other genitalia, as the case may be. I tend to think the brain is the most important, and current science indicates, and given the historical continual refusal of us to not stop existing, um, I think it's probably the case that gender identity is formed in the womb, for the most part. Uh, typically, in the, uh, typically in the 10th to 12th week of gestation, it is correlated with assigned sex at birth, but it is not a hundred percent correlation. There are trans women, there are trans men. Um, and so yes, I was born female. Uh, it took me some time to realize it, because guess what? Uh, Pollyanna, if someone had said, if the first words out of a doctor's mouth when you were born was, it's a boy, well, you'd have trouble correcting them too. Because you wouldn't know any better. Um, kids don't, kids tend to not know any better. Some people have an excellently formed sense of gender identity. A lot of people, you know, having not known how to compare the two and knowing only their own personal experience will just kind of take people's word for it for a while. So, yeah, and she's like, can you tell me what other women's music festivals you've personally attended that you would recommend? I'm sorry, I didn't realize my ability to point out the flaws in someone else's reasoning were dependent on my ability to get a week off work. Um, I haven't recently. You know why, among other things, um, there are people like you who go out of their way to make places like that not safe for people like me. For women like me. <sighs> so, 
So yeah. Um, or what transgender-only events you've organized to empower yourself? We did a little work for Trans Day of Remembrance, but a lot of times, you know, groups allow allies. Um, especially a group that's small is about 1% of the population, like we are. Um, that's always a good one. Yeah. Very, very threatened by having possibly one in 200 attendees at FEST uh, be trans. That's... It's cute. Um, so, yes. My ability to comment on a situation does not need to be directly related to my activist cred. I'm sorry. Um, and no, I, a lot of the times I don't believe in trans, you know, um, unisex trans inclusive space. It, I don't know. Um, I don't like men. I mean, very much at all on a general basis. So I don't really want to spend time with them. <sighs> but anyway, I... You know, the crux of the argument that she doesn't want to mention here is she doesn't see trans women as women. Um, and I told her as much. And she pretty much agreed. Um, not, you know, noddingly agreed, but here is the last thing she said. Okay, you're not even pretending to answer any of my questions now, so I shall not return, again, your call if you want to cease to engage in a debate. Um, I really was answering questions, but again, I, I think the, you know, questions of cred as opposed to the actual issue are kind of deflecting, and if I call you on that, that's not refusing to answer a question. Um, that's saying that you're arguing in, in a specious manner. Try to find a place in your life where you are wanted and valued, and you will perhaps be able to shed some of that male privilege. Uh, I knew we were going to get there, and find happiness. Try to find a place in my life where I am wanted and valued. I kind of think I have. Um, I really do tend to think I have, but you know, it's okay. I understand you need to paint me as some sad little cave troll who just, you know, is really finally hoping to get access to female bodies. That's, that's the subtext there. Yes, and you will perhaps be able to shed some of that male privilege and find happiness. Oh yeah, and of course the classic, don't keep knocking on doors where you don't belong. Again, I, I'm going to go back to the, don't say it's a fest for all women, and then not allow, discourage, and actively preach hate towards those women. Oh, one of my favorite lines, um... <laughs> Uh, before I get started with this, this discussion of male privilege, and we're, like, this has just been one very long preface, and forgive me if it's a bit rambling, I don't script these. I really should. I mean, there are online teleprompters, but I don't. Um, the thing about the, the don't keep knocking on doors where you don't belong, just, I can't. I can't find words for how stereotypically othering that is, and how much of a prob how how much the attitudes of um, of people who defend this policy are informed by just blatant trans misogyny. Uh, my favorite, I was directed by a friend of mine to the uh, Mishfest forums, and. Someone was, someone had a, bo uh, a boyfriend, he was trans, um, he'd recently come out to her and was beginning transition, and she wanted to take him to fest, you know, possibly because, hey, you know, look at all these girls having fun, you can be a girl too. My dad tried that, it doesn't work. Um, <laughs> anyway, one of the responses were, you know, and I thought, since I liked girls' sports and video games, that I had to be a boy. Oh, <laughs> me too. <laughs> Uh, I was a fanatic golfer and curler in high school. Um, 
I mean, don't get me wrong, they're probably two of the most stereotypically dikey sports, but it was, that was one of the arguments my dad said. Well, you know, you're into sports. It's like, yeah, these things, they do not mean necessarily what you think they mean. Um, there's a lot of stupid preconceptions about gender as, as in male or female, and gender is in masculine or feminine traits and activities. Um, the two are pretty different. Uh, there's, there's some overlap, but it's, again, not even close to 100%. Um, but let's talk, let's talk about the male privilege with which I was raised. And I really don't like to talk about this. I really was hesitant to record this video because I'm going to talk about some really crappy personal shit that I shouldn't have to talk about. I don't like reliving, um, reliving my teenage years one iota. But I'm going to do it for you because it's very instructive. Um, I was hit as a kid. Um, I was hit um, a lot of times over my weight. Um, or, I don't know, my dad just, I guess, thought I was uppity or didn't play well with others. Um, he was an intimidating person. He didn't criticize often, but when he did, it was very vicious. And one thing I remember when I was 12, we were having a discussion and he felt the desperate need to point attention to the way I was holding my hands. I had the, you know, the traditional wrist down. I wasn't conscious, it just, you know, sometimes these things happen. Um, a lot of, a lot of gestures and cadence and the way one holds oneself are a lot more subconscious than we give them credit for. So, I spent a lot of time trying to correct that. Um, then there was the hell that was junior high school. I, I was the kid that nobody liked. And it's only looking at it in retrospect that one begins to see a pattern. Um, you can make the argument that it's selection bias, but I, I strongly doubt it. Um, because, well, well, we'll get to the point where it's very clearly not, but, you know, I had my bike tires deflated, I had my locker spit on, I, the worst thing about junior high school, I think, the, was the segregated classes, the, um, I don't know about you, Pollyanna, but there's a special level of hell if you're ever trapped in a class with 30 boys. Um, especially when, on some level, they twig to knowing you're not one of them. I tried to change separately, like just go to a washroom stall and just, you know, get into my uh, gym shorts and t-shirt that way, but that wasn't possible. Um, I was swarmed, things were thrown into the stall, um, people slammed on the doors. In that little in that little locker room I had my shoes stolen, I had my shirt set on fire, um, I was mobbed, I had someone just decide they were going to press down very uh, hard on my leg until I ho uh, uh, hollered in pain. Yeah. Oh, and it, it really didn't matter that I, um, I was better than everyone else in the class in, ma in mathematics and science. We had segregated mathematics and science classes um, as well. You know, the teacher, he was a gym teacher and he paid attention to the jobs. He paid attention to the, you know, the model typical alpha males. Um, and he really seemed annoyed at the fact that I was there at all. Um, and that was the only teacher who did, you know. Someone who really looked forward to this class as an opportunity to have 
a place where everything could be male gendered and I don't know it made him uncomfortable um, there wasn't like it was a constant occurrence that there was food or spit or other foreign material that I can't identify smeared on my on the lock to my locker um, nothing was done about this of course um, Someone in shop class asked if I'd like a dildo attached to a belt sander so I could stick it in my pussy, but yeah. So yeah, th this is what happens when you get all the opprobrium and all the misogyny and none of the sisterhood. Um, oh, and it gets worse. It gets worse. High school was... Some of the violent stuff, some of that absolute utter culture of cruelty stuff died down. Some of it didn't. Um, I had someone who threw, who threw condiments at me in, uh, in math class all through high school. That was... No one really did anything to stop it. Nobody cared. Nobody... Nobody could give two shits. And that was minor. Um, I'll tell you what wasn't minor. And I don't like talking about this, but... We had, um, I guess a campus radio station you'd call... You know, that's a very generous term for it. What it meant was during lunch hour, someone would volunteer to play CDs. Um, and uh, in the in the cafetorium, as they called it, big, you know, cafeteria slash auditorium. Um, and there was this one boy who decided that he was going to humiliate me by rubbing my breasts. I pretty much always had prominent breasts for high school. Um, I think there was maybe a year when I was thin enough that they weren't more than, you know, um, a, an A. But yeah. Um, and I told him to stop. And he didn't. He came back and rubbed again. Um, I yelled at him to stop into a mic into the live microphone. Two hundred people there. Uh, young men and women and adults, and no one did a damn thing. No one did a damn thing. You, you want to point at outcomes? I had a really good year last year, and I earned 28 grand, and I think that was the best year I've ever had. Um, you want to talk about freedom from sexual assault? as some element of male privilege, then it's pretty clear I don't have that. Um, I don't know what else to say, other than I never got gendered as male growing up, and I got the hell kicked out of me for it. And I wasn't a really, really fanboy, you know. I mean, I was, I was a tomboyish girl, um, whether or not you want to admit it. And I am forceful, and I am assertive, and I am full of myself because I found that the only time anyone paid attention to me was when I could demonstrate that I knew something they didn't know, that I had better commands, uh, command of the facts than anyone else in the room. So if you want to call my, autodi my, my autodidactism uh, an element of male privilege that I was taught to be smart, well, you got another thing coming there, because I wasn't. I was taught that, you know, how you do in school doesn't really matter. You know, you should, you should really work on, you know, having a body that women will like. Of course, you know, the kind of women I like 
wouldn't like the kind of body that they were trying to encourage me to have. <sighs> yeah. Yeah, I was sexually assaulted in front of 200 people at my high school, and no one did anything. And you dare talk to me about residual privilege that needs to be owned. They have to treat you as though you're male, as opposed to just punishing you for not being male before that happens. That's it.